All right, what's happening, y'all? It's your boy Rico from Street Scores. And, man, we got to talk about a lot today. I gave y'all a day off with offensive coordinator stuff yesterday. Talked about a lot of other stuff around the organization. Got y'all caught up with everything else outside of this whole coaching carousel that we got going on. But today, it's time to get to it. We got to talk about why Thomas Brown could potentially be the commander's best offensive coordinator option of course we also got to talk about eric studs and why he's probably the safest option and why i think it's quite likely that rivera will probably choose him over everybody else and then of course we also got to talk about the breaking news from this morning db's coach chris harris is apparently leaving for the titans we got to talk about what that means and how much of a loss that could potentially be for us and all of that type of stuff so we have a lot of coaching stuff to talk about today some potential gains some potential losses as well because for some reason this Chris Harris thing isn't officially finalized but it sounds like even if he doesn't go to the Titans he'll probably go elsewhere we got to talk about why but before we dive into all of that make sure you subscribe to the channel hit the bell next to the subscription button so you get a notification immediately and every time I release an informative and opinionated video just like this one make sure you pull up every sunday including tomorrow make sure you pull up to the live call in show where i open up the phone lines for y'all to call in you voice your opinions or you ask whatever questions you may have whether it can be anything draft free agency franchise quarterback offensive coordinators it can even be outside of commanders it can even be outside of football whatever you want to talk about make sure you pull up for the live call in show of course we're going to talk about commanders most of the time but again make sure you call in and talk about whatever you want to talk about i'll answer questions and everything so without further ado let's get it All right, first of all, let's talk about Thomas Brown first because he's probably one of the most intriguing offensive coordinator options that we have out there. If you're looking for the bright young mind that is just skyrocketed up coaching circles and the way guys view him as like the next like Kyle Shanahan, potentially the next Sean McVay or things like that. Look no further than Sean McVay's potential prodigy. We're going to talk about his history and how highly Sean McVay views this guy and why he could potentially be one of those next type of guys. The next young offensive mind, really creative, innovative type of guy. Everything that we kind of hope that we could potentially get out of Eric Bieniemy, he may be the next one. I've heard a lot of Rams fans are upset about the fact that they're potentially losing Thomas Brown and for good reason. First of all, let's talk about the fact that Thomas Brown was once Matthew Stafford's college teammate at Georgia. And of course, I mean, I'm trying not to be biased here, but if we could potentially bring in an offensive coordinator that's born and raised in Georgia, went to Georgia University, you know, sign me up for that period. You already got my vote. And of course, I want us to start drafting a whole lot of Georgia players because I mean, with all these championships we've been winning, the same logic we've had with Alabama when they were winning championships, I feel like we should do the same thing. Plus a lot of these Georgia guys are just free athletes y'all know i want broderick jones and darnell washington if we can get both i'd be very happy about that but i'm also down to go corner in the draft and i love keely ringo but to be completely objective i would prefer a joey porter or a christian gonzalez over keely ringo but broderick jones and darnell washington yes please but i'm getting off track definitely love the fact that thomas brown born and raised georgia went to georgia university and everything it is just amazing again the fact that he was a college teammate with matthew stafford and now he's potentially going to become an offensive coordinator and maybe even a head coach for another team in houston texas which we'll get to later all of the jobs that he's potentially interviewing for right now matthew stafford is still not even that old matthew stafford is only 34 years old meanwhile you have one of his college teammates potentially getting a head coach job and potentially offensive coordinator here he's only 30 36 years old and I've always been in the realm of we need to go get that next young bright offensive mind the next Kyle Shanahan the next Sean McVay the next maybe Mike McDaniel you could say even like Ben Johnson with how creative he's been with the Lions my boy Shane Steichen who's the current offensive coordinator for the Eagles who developed Justin Herbert in his rookie season and then turned Jalen Hurts into what I believe was not that good of a player to a potential MVP candidate within two years Thomas Brown is potentially one of those type of guys and I'm definitely down to take 
take a big swing on that i way more prefer to go that route than the older safer run the ball offensive coordinator like eric studfield who we're going to talk about a little bit later i'd way more prefer to go with the thomas brown just off of that alone but let's get into his history first of all before we dive into all of that as a coach he went back to georgia in 2011 to be the strength and conditioning coach at georgia then he went to chattanooga as the running backs coach then marshall then wisconsin and then back to georgia all his running backs coaches and then for miami for two three years he was the offensive coordinator and running backs coach then south carolina went back to being the running backs coach then for the rams he was the running backs coach in 2020 then he became the running backs coach and assistant head coach in 2021 and then in 2022 he became the tight ends coach and then as well the assistant head coach i mean literally the guy right under sean mcveigh which takes me to the point i mean this is directly from the athletic shouts out to jordan rodriguez he said after roles at several different colleges and unbeknownst to brown he appeared on rams head coach sean mcveigh's radar and if Sean McVay has his eye on you from afar, there must be something to that. But that's not it. And McVay is notorious hiring list. He hired Brown in 2020. And just one season into his tenure as the Rams running backs coach, Brown was promoted to assistant head coach. In 2021, during the team's Super Bowl run, Brown interviewed for an NFL head coaching job and offensive coordinator vacancy. In 2022, as the Rams' new tight ends coach, he helped coordinate the defending champs passing game while his name gained momentum in hiring circles around the league he's one of those guys his name is going around Sean McVay promoted him from burning backs coach to assistant head coach within one year he's seeing something in these meetings and in these film sessions and on the practice field and on the sideline there's something he's doing that Sean McVay is like hey you're next up type of thing and if Sean McVay believes in you like that I'm willing to at least take a chance on him we already let Sean McVay Kyle Shanahan Matt LaFleur Kevin O'Connell leave let's go and steal us one back from Sean McVay I think that would be a great idea me personally. The athletic article goes on to say as a player at Georgia from 2004 to 2007 when he rushed for 2,646 yards and twice finished top 10 in the SEC in yards per carry, Brown seemed to attack the position with a specific fearlessness. He dove into the contact with a clear-eyed savviness that switched the advantage. How could he initiate the hit and not simply be the recipient of it? How could he create opportunities and hard to maneuver places? And apparently a lot of people, including Sean McVay, feel like he took that exact mentality into his coaching approach. We got to be careful, though, because like I already talked about earlier briefly, he's expected to interview for the offensive coordinator position this upcoming week for the commanders. But he's also received interest from the Houston Texans as their potential head coach this upcoming season. And I like the fact that, I mean, running backs coach for the Rams one year, assistant head coach the next year, then moved to tight end. So he's gotten a nice little viewpoint of the running backs, the tight ends, and how to develop a passing game around those guys. And with the running back talent that we have, and I'm hoping that we go crazy in tight end talent, and maybe he can learn on the way with wide receivers. He probably already has a good grasp of that as well. But if he knows all of those different position groups and can maximize the potential of those guys, our offense could be deadly. My only worry is really just play calling. That's it. If he can come in and play call at the very least better than Scott Turner, which a lot of people would feel like that's not saying much. But again, if Sean McVay is this high on this guy and it's sad to potentially lose him to a bigger job and a bigger opportunity this offseason, there has to be something there. And I'm willing to have faith in the fact that he can develop guys and create a great passing offense that we need to be able to go to the Super Bowl man because running the ball is nice and you need to be able to run the ball to have consistent success at the NFL level and with our defense and being able to control the clock and win time of possession that is a winning formula but it's 2023 it's not 1980 you got to be able to pass the ball very well at a very high clip with a very high efficiency and this could be the guy that could end up doing that and we could have just found a diamond in the rough that next upcoming prodigy the next bright offensive mind that could be potentially be Thomas Brown please go get him if we can man and just overall Brown will be the team's fifth interview for the job Washington has previously interviewed former Giants head coach Pat Shermer Commanders quarterbacks coach Ken Zampezi who could potentially get the promotion from inside the team Falcons QB coach Charles London who I also like as well and then Washington reportedly had a list of like eight names paired down from their original 20 candidates that's what has been reported 
and former head coach Jim Caldwell, a Miami Dolphins passing game coordinator, and QB's coach Daryl Bevel, who I also really wanted, I like Daryl Bevel a lot, have reportedly turned down requests to interview for Washington's offensive coordinator position. Shane Steichen from the Eagles was one of my favorite candidates as far as not being realistic, like a dream case scenario, because why would he even make a lateral move to come to the commanders? And on top of that, I really like Thomas Brown. I really wanted Daryl Bevel, who already said no. And I'm a little intrigued by Charles London. I'm not going to lie. And Pat Shermer, I felt like he's a really good quarterback developer, which is great for Sam Howell, but I'm not necessarily sure about his play calling. So Thomas Brown is probably my favorite option who's remaining at this point, including the guy who we're about to talk about next, Eric Studsville. And this is more of the mold of what I feel like Rivera likes in an offensive coordinator, even though Scott Turner doesn't fit any of these at all. And maybe because of Scott Turner being this supposed young, bright offensive mind, which I didn't necessarily agree with all the way when he first got here. I feel like Thomas has a lot more potential to him. I mean, again, with the way that Sean McVay loves him, there has to be something there. But I feel like Rivera may stray away from the young, bright offensive mind because of his previous experience with that he just had with Scott Turner and wanting to always pass the ball and Ron Rivera wanting to run it more and more. But then again, that just kind of shows that they're at the very least doing their due diligence and in interviewing everybody. Whether you're a run first guy or a pass first guy, whether you're young, you're old, it seems like they're interviewing everybody. There's not a specific guy that they're trying to get, at least as far as interviews go, but who knows? It just seems like Eric Studsfield would be more of the guy. The older guy will be 56 years old by the time this upcoming NFL season starts. He turns 56 in May. He's been coaching in the NFL since 1997. For the Chicago Bears alone, he was offensive quality control coach and offensive assistant, wide receivers coach, and assistant special teams coach. Then he went to the Giants as the running backs coach, did the same thing for the Bills. Then he became running game coordinator and running backs coach for the Bills. And then for the Denver Broncos, he was the running backs coach. Then he ended up being the interim head coach in that same season of 2010. And that's a crazy rise from running backs coach to interim head coach. I mean, that does kind of say something. Then he became offensive coordinator for the Denver Broncos from 2011 through 2016 while also being the running backs coach. Then he was the running backs coach and running game coordinator for the Dolphins from 2017 through 2020. Then he got promoted to co-offensive coordinator and running backs coach in 2021. And then he was the associate head coach and running backs coach last year for the Dolphins. Well, this previous season, 2022, that we're now in the playoffs for. So he's been around everywhere. He's done just about everything. And that does sound like more of a Rivera guy. Now, he's not the young, bright, offensive minded head coach, but he's a decent candidate. He's a guy that it just seems like he comes with somewhat of a high floor, but not necessarily a high ceiling, which again, you already know what type of guy I prefer, but he doesn't sound like a terrible option. If we ended up hiring him, I don't think it's panic hit the red button type of thing. Shouts out to Pro Football Talk, Miles Simmons. He said, as a longtime NFL assistant, Studsfeld has been with the Dolphins since 2017 when he was brought in to be the club's running backs coach and running game coordinator under Adam Gase. He held that position through 2020 under Brian Flores and was named offensive coordinator and running backs coach in 2011. And then Mike McDaniels retained Studfield in 2022, naming him associate head coach. So he definitely made a really good first impression on Mike McDaniel, a lasting impression for him to survive three head coaching changes like that. I mean, they've they've gone through three head coaches and Studfield survived all of those changes. So that definitely says something. And also really, really interesting. Shouts out to this crazy fun fact. Offensive coordinator Eric Studfield, his wife is Stacy, a standout basketball player at Purdue, played for the Chicago Twisters of the now defunct WBA, but her head coach was Stephanie Rivera, Ron's wife. So that's a crazy connection in itself. Super insider type of fun fact. Again, he's not one of those high potential guys, I would say, but he's a safe option to where I feel like he would do exactly what Ron Rivera wants him to do. We will run the ball very well. Not exactly optimistic about how our passing game would be which is very important for me which is why he's not one of my favorite candidates but I can see the logic behind why Ron Rivera would want to bring this type of guy in I'm really really hoping we go and fight for Thomas Brown though please bring him in in my opinion but moving on into the last topic sad news for commanders the Titans plan to hire Chris Harris as the defensive pass game coordinator cornerbacks coach per sources Harris who spent the last three seasons with the commanders remains in play for defensive coordinator coordinator jobs elsewhere too a highly respected assistant so again nothing is official yet but it looks like this is pretty much what's gonna happen remember chris harris arrived in washington in 2020 with rivera rivera brought him over here with him not from carolina but from another place and harris is obviously highly regarded but washington struggled in the secondary the first two years he was here but then in 2022 everything turned around 
and you can give him a lot of the credit for Benjamin St. Juice's development, Derek Forrest's development, and most importantly, Cameron Curls as well. Cameron Curl is arguably the most underrated safety in the NFL, and Chris Harris has a lot to do with how well he's been playing. I mean, even just Danny Johnson balling out, even though he looks terrible in preseason games in the regular season, Danny Johnson steps up big time. And we've been knowing this for a while. I mean, I believe he got interviewed for a defensive coordinator position from the Eagles like a couple of years ago. Teams have been trying to take him away from the commanders for years, but he just kept coming back and accepting his role as a DB's coach. And what I'm really sad about is because he's always consistently been the coach with the most energy at practice, training camp, all of that type of stuff. He's the one yelling and talking the most trash. So I'm going to be really sad to see him go for that reason, especially. But most importantly, the development of Cameron Curl, Benjamin St. Juice, and Derek Forrest are nothing to just simply gloss over and ignore, man. That That is huge. And that's probably why the Titans have their eyes on them seeing that. I mean, Cameron Curl was a seventh round pick. Derek Forrest was, I believe, a sixth or a fifth round pick. I believe sixth. And then Benjamin St. Juice was a third. I mean, what he's gotten out of these guys that aren't necessarily these top tier talent guys, first, second round guys, is amazing in itself. Again, we were lucky to have him as long as we did. I knew this was inevitable. I'm surprised that it didn't happen sooner, but it's still sad to see him potentially leave. And maybe he's leaving before all of this chaos goes down with the new owners. Maybe he knows something that we don't because the commanders could end up completely cleaning house in 2014, changing everything. Team president and Jason Wright, head coach and Ron Rivera, GM and Martin Mayhew, all of the coordinator positions, all of the positional coach positions. You never know. The new owner may want to come in and do a clean sweep, may even want to change the name from the commander. I mean, we absolutely have no idea how crazy this can get. And Chris Harris may already know from the inside what may potentially happen. Or who knows? Maybe he doesn't know and just wants to steer clear of it. And maybe he's like, all right, I think it's about time for me to go ahead and dip up out of here. But it's really interesting because it's kind of a promotion. But at the same time, it's kind of a lateral move to go from the commanders to the Titans for the position that he's going for. Again, defensive passing game coordinator and cornerbacks coach. Whereas here, he was the complete DBs coach and had control over the corners and the safeties and all of that. So it's kind Kind of a lateral move and it's really interesting that he's abandoning ship the way that he is because it's not like he's going somewhere else to get a major promotion like a lot of people thought he could have gotten defensive coordinator positions for other teams and apparently he's still out there looking for potential defensive coordinator jobs this hiring cycle but for him to go from the commanders to the titans in almost the same exact position shows that he may just be abandoning ship and as loyal as he was the past couple of years it has me worried about where this organization is headed under new ownership for a guy like chris harris who's turned down defensive coordinator positions in previous years to make a lateral move to go elsewhere this hiring cycle definitely a red flag but he will definitely be missed man i loved having him here with the way benjamin st juice camera curl and Derek forrest develop that's huge but yeah man that's the end of this video please get in the comment section let me know how you feel about everything discussed in this video thomas bryant is a potential offensive coordinator eric studs is a potential offensive coordinator and then of course chris harris leaving definitely get in the comment section let me know how you feel about all of that stuff and then of course please leave a like on this video if you liked it if you learned anything of course shouts out to all of my sponsors especially my pro bowl sponsors whose name you see scrolling on the screen right now i appreciate all of the support i'm gonna catch y'all later i'm out